Hey, everybody. What's so funny? <laughs> what? Now that I'm sleepy, uh, but that's good. I'm good. Hey, it's Frederick and Jean Watts. Yeah. And we are live tonight for Love in 60 Seconds. Mm -hmm. Coming live from uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Hey, Yvette. It's hey, good to see you guys. Yvette. How you doing? Hopefully our internet. Hey, Lisa. How are you? Good. Uh, I'll hang out tonight. So we're on vacation, so we're not going to be long. Um, but we just want to come and talk to you guys. Hope that you guys have a good week. As always, wherever you are on social media, if you could share and, mm -hmm. and comment and like, we'd definitely like to know what you guys are thinking and always like to hear from you. Yeah. So um, I don't know if our Facebook people, if you could give us some hearts, make sure that you can hear us because we're, like, like I said, out of the country. Yeah, we're don't know out of the country, going on. so we don't know what you hear. You can <laughs> hear us at all. Yeah, but so, um, so tonight we talk, we're going to talk about... Um, God speaks to who you are and not where you are. And that's a, uh, thank you guys, appreciate it. Pretty profound uh, message or a pretty profound statement mm -hmm. that we just want to share how that uh, reflects in relationships. Yep. Um, so, I mean, in the Bible, there's so many examples. Thank you for so oh, many hearts. Thank you. Love uh, you guys. There's uh, so many examples of how um, God speaks to um, people um, who they are, who he has said them, you know, spoken them to be, as opposed to where they are. For example, there is um, David. He uh, spoke to Samuel, and what did he say to Samuel, sweetheart? Well, uh, when he had rejected Saul as king, he, mm -hmm. he said that he had found another man to replace Saul as king. Yeah. And that was David. Yeah. And at that time, David was a boy. He yeah. was a shepherd boy in the field. And that's how God sees us, and that's how God sees us in relationships, especially in marriage, um, is that, you know, sometimes you may be struggling. Sometimes you may not have everything going great or perfect, but God sees the end and not the beginning. Uh, at least he sees both, but he sees you at that final place where he has you. So he'll speak to you always in how, who you are, mm -hmm. you know? And so even though you may be struggling right now, he knows that you're in, in a relationship is better than your beginning. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, uh, there's other examples of God speaking um, to who the person is as opposed to, um, uh, for example, uh, Abram. Uh, before he became Abraham, he said, you'll be a father of many nations at that particular time. And that, that he would uh, have a son. Mm -hmm. and said that he would have a son at the time. They were barren. He and Sarah, you know, they didn't have any kids, you know, mm -hmm. and she was Sarai at the time. Didn't have any children, but he spoke to you. You'll be the father of many nations, not just one child, but you'll be the father of many nations. Your seed will be across, multiply across the world. Again, speaking to who he was, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to where he was, and how we relate that to our relationships. Once we uh, come together, and we, once our union is blessed uh, by whomever you know, whatever person comes we, that we get married under whether if it's the justice of the peace, where they sanction that marriage, um, your marriage, God speaks and looks at you as a power force, you know, as a union, as one, as blessed, as whole. Um, and he speaks to that person. He speaks to that union. He speaks to that entity. He doesn't necessarily speak to where you are at that particular moment, because when you get uh, married, you really have, there's a lot of building that has to go on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, um, things that have to be put together, that have to be made, and that have to be maintained in a relationship. And the biggest mistake that people make in marriage and in relationships is thinking that, oh, I'm in love with this person. I really enjoy this person's, you know, company. Uh, and we talked about that last week about, you know, the four, four C's, C's of relationship. You know, just being a couple, that's just two people. You know what I'm saying? That's two people together. You know, just, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, comrades or good friends, that's, you know, that's two people mm -hmm. being friends, enjoying spending time together. And then even com um, companions, mm -hmm. that's, you know, I got somebody to go to the grocery store with or whatever it is. And then, you know, most people stop there. We even met a couple um, this week. Uh, well, what, since we've been here and uh, they've been married for, I think, 43 years, he said. Mm -hmm. and, he, and we were like, well, what's the key to, you know, being married 43 years? And he was like, uh, you know, just... Mm -hmm. Just uh, what do you say? Uh, just, just knowing when to be quiet and right, and and, no, and, 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 and don't give a mess, yeah. you know, don't give crap about whatever. Yeah. And I was like, what? You know, this is what the key is for you for forty three years. Mm -hmm. But I told my husband, I said, you know what? 
and, and they, he's like, oh, we come down here every year with other other couples, other families. Um, what well, was it really other couples? Mm -hmm. And he said, we spent at least six weeks in Mexico. Uh, you know, we do this. And I said, I said to my husband, I said, you know, even though they've been married 43 years, I really think that they stop at being companions, just somebody to come to wherever. And they didn't go and graduate to that level of intimacy, of, uh, of being a true confidant. Mm -hmm. um, because once you become that, you know, God speaks to us in that language that, okay, you, you're a couple already. He's, you're that person right now, but he mm -hmm. wants you to be confidants. He wants you to be so much one that when he said, man, you know, it's not good for man to be alone. And when he puts you with someone, he places your union together. Um, it just, you know, he wants you to be so much more. He wants you to have more, so much more fulfillment and so much more happiness mm -hmm. um, than, than just being together. And we have to take those godly principles that he gives us examples mm -hmm. um, um, in the Bible when he speaks to us in those in those areas. Mm -hmm. But he also we have to take that upon ourselves to speak to our spouses in that manner, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to say um, what you see in your spouse and what God has seen your spouse to be. Because as when you get married, where we were when we 23 years ago is not where we are now. Absolutely. And so you continue to grow, you continue to expand. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when people get into trouble in marriages or when people get into trouble in situations where they're struggling is that they don't speak what God has for them, what they see their spouse as. Right. They speak to them as where they are. Absolutely. You, you know, good. You're not bringing home no money. You, you're struggling. You know, you're this, you're that. We don't you made me feel, we're not getting along. We don't along. feel intimate. You know, we don't not, feel, I don't feel I don't close to no. you. Yeah, no, you, you have to. Yeah. When you're in those times, you yeah. have to be able to speak. Even though we're doing that, I see you as that man of God. I mm -hmm. see you as that woman of God. I see you as being strong. I see you as being faithful. I see you as being fruitful. I see you as being responsible with money. I see you being re a good husband, a great father, mm -hmm. all those things, a great son. Um, a woman has to speak that thing things into a man and, and a man has to speak those things into a woman you're a great mother you are honored at the gate you are a wall mm -hmm. you're not a door right you are so many things you are you know especially speak to her her emotions mm -hmm. being able to build her up so that she can trust you honor you and love you and a lot of times relationship struggles is because people refuse to speak past their situation mm -hmm. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's very important. So if you have issues in your marriage or issues in relationships, you have to be able to speak past your situations, just like God speaks past your situation. Absolutely. God, you know, you have to speak to the person who they are and who God made them to be to mm -hmm. you. Um, even, even I was sharing with my husband in our relationship, God had spoken to me a scripture to just declare over my husband. I didn't really know. I had no idea what the scripture said. He just told me where to find the scripture. So when I read it, I was blown away at how amazing this scripture was. And for me to com confess the scripture just over my husband and many of those things he already, he already is, but it's, it just began to speak to some really personal things that we've been praying about, you know, about um, for our family and just for him. And you can do the same thing. You can find somebody I'm, I'm sorry, find scriptures or find uh, words of declaration that you speak to where that person is, uh, mm -hmm. who that person is, not where they are, because they right. may not be a person that's making the kind of money. They may not be the person that's showing you the kind of love and intimacy you want to see. But when you speak um, to who that person is, mm -hmm. You are loving, you are kind, you are so amazing, you are tender, you are gentle with me, um, you make me feel so loved, you make mm -hmm. me feel special, um, you know, nobody makes me feel like you make me feel, you are amazing. You're beginning to speak to who that person is and not where they are, because they may not be living up to that at that moment. And you got to continue to speak over them, because sometimes if you're not reinforcing that, a lot of times they'll, they'll kind of fall into the you know, oh, well, you know, what's the use in trying mm -hmm. if you continually saying, well, you're not doing this or you're not doing, I really need you to do this. I need you to do more than that. Try speaking to what they are to be and what God is saying that they are. And that will really help to not, not only motivate them, but it really will begin to, uh, by faith, bring those things. You're calling those things that are not as though they were. Right. And, and basically what it is, our title of tonight is what God speaks to who you are and not where you are. And what that is, is that 
it's a declaration. Absolutely. And if you incorporate that in your marriage, that you're going to declare things over your spouse, over your finances, over your children, mm -hmm. over your household, um, as individuals and as a couple, mm -hmm. then it's going to set a precedence to where the enemy has no way to get in. He has no way mm -hmm. to get through the walls, the boundaries that you set up to protect your. Uh, <laughs> what? I'm like, is my breath stinking so? <laughs> <laughs> he keep getting further and further away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, she didn't say no. So. <laughs> We, so we're going to cut this short today. But, no, 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 but, no, I'm but, sorry. No, but, uh, but no, you, you make declarations to protect your marriage mm -hmm. and to set boundaries for mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, absolutely, you do. And again, it's, it's like we spoke before, you know, um, when Christ, the, the, the example of how Christ deals with the church or how his relationship is with the church is how a man's relationship with his bride should be. And the part that I love the most about when he, when the Bible speaks about that is that um, he has a, uh, a a church without a spot. He presents unto himself a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He presents it into himself. So basically, it's what he made his bride to be. And you know, men, you can speak to the to the female in your life, the wife in your life. You know, she's what you make her. And, mm. and women, your husband, it's what you know he you make as far as speaking into them. And speaking over them and de declaring over them again who they are, not where they are, because they may not be built up to that man yet that you think. And people think a whole lot of things about marriage that you're just going to get married and, and ride off into the sunset. And it does not require any work. It requires extremely difficult work, but extremely rewarding work. Mm -hmm. It is, um, you know, uh, uh, they, like Lisa said, a lot of couples, are, after being married for many years, they said that their relationship changes. It is absolutely true. You change. I'm not the person that I was when we first got married mm -hmm. at all. He's not the person that he was when he we first got married. Mm -hmm. We change. And then sometimes people say, um, um, you are, uh, what is it? Oh, we grew apart. No, you didn't really grow apart. You just mm -hmm. didn't be intentional about growing together. Right. You know, and and God is, you know, he's, <laughs> he's really fighting for your marriage. <laughs> he God is. God bless you, Mike, my brother. God yes, bless you. God is fighting but, for your you marriage. But, you know, and regardless of even if you've been married once or twice or mm -hmm. even if, you know, you didn't get it right the first time. Yeah. You know, God honors the commitment. Yeah. And so don't be scared to, to get back in it and try it again. You Absolutely. Know? You know, um, and, and that's the thing. A lot of times. We see when people have issues in marriage, it's usually a communication issue yep. and an honesty issue. Yep. And then a lot of times, especially if you deal with infidelity or something where a man has not uh, has made a mistake, if he doesn't feel the um, ability to be able to communicate that he made a mistake and that you can, his wife is going to trust him mm -hmm. to, to first give that trust back so that he can earn it again mm -hmm. and then go forward. Mm -hmm. You know, men will, will let things fall apart. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll just be like, you know what? I love my wife, but I made this mistake. So now I'm just going to stick with what I've created. Mm -hmm. When God wants you to, to, to be able to be like, you know what? Nope. I'm a man up. I'm going to hit this and address this head on, mm -hmm. put it out in the open so that both of you can work at it together solve the issue and go forward mm -hmm. you know and that's part of being making a declaration you know you have to declare that no matter what happened yesterday today is a new day mm -hmm. and i'm going to go for it because his grace and his mercy is new every morning but you have to have a declaration that you're going to do that that you're going to be committed to marriage mm -hmm. to the communication and to the honesty that takes part of it and saying hey i'm not perfect but we're perfect together because when we're in this together there's really three of us me, you, and Christ. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know, uh, again, that all goes. <laughs> that all goes. Um, you know, and absolutely, there, there is no trust. There is no relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that has to be built. But again, trust is something that is a consistent thing that you can consistently work on. That's men and women. You know, women, if you out spending all the money or doing whatever, you know, and your husband can't trust you with the checkbook, that's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. And trust issues are trust issues. Uh, the best thing is not to break trust because if you break trust, it's really, really difficult. And it's a long road a lot of times to uh, regain and to reestablish trust. 
Um, but again, uh, that's, that's still rebuilding trust. It's a part of speaking um, to who a person is and not where they are. If they're a person that breaks trust or a person that has a weakness in a certain area, it is really, hey, it's why it is really important that you uh, work hard to speak the words that re, re help to build that trust again. Yeah, man. It helps to, uh, to, to rebuild that trust again. If you don't um, speak the words to help rebuild that trust, um, mm -hmm. it, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to reestablish that. And you have to let that person know if they're really sincerely trying, you have to let that person know that they're making some headway. No, I'm not 100% there yet, but yes, you keep doing what you're doing and that's going to help me to trust you that much more. Mm -hmm. That's going to help me um, really know um, that we're coming together that we're going to make it right yeah. and you know it was when you look at the story of abraham and how god spoke to him in his situation he you know when he he told him to come out of the land that he was in mm -hmm. and you know he and he, he told him that if he did that he would make him a father of, of many of, of many nations and you know abraham was like you know, I'm nobody special, you know, but mm -hmm. God saw the future. And one thing when we talked about the declaration and what it means, a declaration is is really an act of faith that mm -hmm. you are speaking into existence. Mm -hmm. And if as men, especially as a priest of your home, if you regardless if, if you're single mm -hmm. or if you're married or if you're dating, if you start declaring things in your life, what that it does is it allow God's to God to really move you to the place where he wants you to be. Sure. And we're talking as as believers, as Christians who believe the, the word of God, yeah. you know, and 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 counseling and even when we're coaching people and helping people and counseling people, you know, one of the things that we ask them um, is, what do you want? What do you want? What do you see in your marriage? Yeah. Right? What do you want the future to be? And if you have no vision, if you have nothing to declare, you really aren't giving a platform for God to move in the way that he wants you to move. Absolutely. And, and also, you know, you have to be obedient. And like I said, we're not going to be on long tonight because there's a yep. hot tub with my name on it outside. Yeah. And the, waves my are, yes, crashing the waves are crashing. But anyways, yeah. look at our post. And see yeah. Where but, uh, you know, you have to have obedience. You know, you have to be obedient to what God is saying uh, in order for you to be successful in uh, even your declarations. Because uh, one thing about Abram is God told him to leave his kindred, leave his kinsmen, leave everybody and go. And he he left most of everyone, mm -hmm. but he took Lot with him. Mm -hmm. And what what happened during that time? You know, even though God had told him and gave him a promise, and told him all the great things that he would do, because he wasn't fully obedient, God didn't speak to him till Lot departed out of his life. So even though he thought he was bringing his his cousin along, mm -hmm. trying to help, because it wasn't what God had wanted and what mm -hmm. God had said. And even though he was being sort of obedient because he didn't do what he wanted, yeah, he didn't speak. There's no and such thing as yeah. sort of obedient. Right. There's no sort of obedient. <laughs> it either is. He's no obedient and, so, and, you know, and that's amazing that God can tell you to do something and God can give you a promise. But if you're not lying with his word, he, can't, yeah. he won't speak to if you. If you're bringing along extra baggage, if you're bringing along a lot in your life, mm -hmm. if you're bringing along something that God has not ordained, if you mm -hmm. uh, uh allowing something that God has not ordained into your life and into your space, yeah. you can silence the, the voice of God in your life because God did not speak to Abram, not one word mm -hmm. until Lot left his life. When Lot left his life, then God starts speaking again. Mm -hmm. So you got to put the Lot out of your life, no matter what that is. If that's a, that's you know, if that's a side piece, if it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, somebody that you know you have no business talking to, uh, mm -hmm. if you if it's somebody that you're investing too much time in talking to, whether it's a it's a family member, you know, just like what what Abram was a family member. Mm -hmm. If it's a family member that you're talking to and you're bringing too much into your relationship and too much into your space, you got to put that lot away so that you can speak and 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 be consistent with what God is saying. Because again, God speaks to who you are, not where you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a place where you got stuff in your life, you got idols in your life, you got stuff in your life that he is not ordained and that he is not sanctioned, then he's not speaking. You can act like he's speaking all you want to. You'd be like, this is God. Right. God is saying this and I know what God wants. You better know for sure what God wants because sometimes it's like, you know, there's you are saying, <laughs> sometimes you, the crazy person is the last one to know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the crazy person is the last one to know. Sometimes the person that is 
outside of the will of God and looks ridiculous is the last one to know that you look ridiculous when you outside of the will of God, just marching all around doing all the things that you think are right. Mm -hmm. And everybody else around you is like, are you kidding me? This person is ridiculous. What is happening with this person? And you don't want to be the last person to know, be the first person to know that you're outside of God's will so that you can get back into God's will uh, in a timely fashion. But the good thing about that is that there's, God is a redeemer. Absolutely. You know? And that no matter what mistakes we make, when we come to him and offer our, our heart back to him, he's just and able to forgive. Oh, yeah. And he redeems us and he can restore everything that the enemy tries to, t- yes, to take away. Absolutely. And so, you know, and we have to just be humble to be like, let God speak to us mm-hmm. and, and be able to speak to us to where we are because we're not where we where we want to be mm-hmm. in every part of our relationships it, right. it just doesn't happen yeah. but god sees our futures he, he knows what's best for us yeah. um and you know regardless if you if you make good good decisions bad decisions wherever you are god is speaking to each and every one of you and saying that he knows where you are right now Absolutely. it's not where you're going to be yeah. but he knows who you are Absolutely. So we challenge you today to just remember in relationships, yeah. those of you that are married mm-hmm. and those of you that are, you know, in, in a relate married, you have to decree good and positive things over your spouse. Mm-hmm. And the only way that you're going to get that is to communicate with God and what God says for you and what God says for your spouse as a man. As the head of your household, the priest of your home, you need to decree the things, those things over your spouse and then over your children if you have them Mm -hmm. and then over every situation. Mm -hmm. And a woman should do the same thing. Decree those things that God has shared for you, for your husband and decree them over your family as well. Mm -hmm. And you can continue to build. So we appreciate every one of you. We're going through the notes right fast. Thank you guys for uh, especially our Facebook. We love you guys. We got great interaction. We're going to be giving away, going back. We really want to get up to about uh, consistently 25, 50 people, yeah. you know, watching. And we're going to give us some more giveaways. We're yeah. going to do some more stuff. we got a lot of things coming. Yeah. But we are on vacation in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> so we're about to enjoy some good things. Because my um, birthday was, yeah, what, two days ago? Two days, two days ago. ago and we came like off our anniversary 23 years Yeah. On Valentine's Day. So yeah. we will be back next Monday. Absolutely. And continue to watch us on Facebook, us on Instagram, seeing our posts. Let us know. We appreciate you guys liking us, yeah. encouraging us. Send us your topics once again on what you want us to talk about. Absolutely. And, and we'll, again, remember to speak um, who your spouse, to who your spouse is, not where they are. Mm-hmm. Speak to who they are, who, what you want to see and what you want. And even speak over yourself. And again, if you're not attracted to your spouse, speak, gosh, you're so amazingly attractive. I'm so in love with you. If you feel like you lost love and you'll be surprised at what you can materialize, what you can make happen um, just by speaking, um, you know, saying what you want to see until you see what you say, as our bishop says, you know what I'm saying? Say it, say it like you want to see it. Uh, Speak those things that are not. And since you mentioned that, if you are in the the Michigan area, especially in Detroit and our bishop is doing a wonderful uh, teaching on on marriage and well, on relationships. Yeah, yeah marriage and yeah. relationships. The and then now uh, he's also doing teaching on fake love. Fake love. That's what we yeah, have. Yeah. So. so if you are in the area, want to get some good word, man. That uh, he is a dynamic. let me tell you, dynamic, powerful, you know, definitely yeah. powerful. And yeah. if not, tune in on I think it's a uh, Burning Bush International Ministries Facebook page. Yeah. And they live stream some good messages. So yes. God bless you. We'll see you guys next week. This has been Love in sixty seconds. seconds. All right. God bless you guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Go ahead.